in Mali, we had a long problem of terrorism. Until recently, under the leadership of Kenel Asim Goita, we realized that, oh, these terrorists are formed by, by uh, Emmanuela Macaron and her Western allies and Sia. Then we decided to remove their international organizations out of Mali, their embassies out of Mali, their military out of Mali, to break the supply chain of weapons, food, and their uh, other uh, necessary resources to fight us, to destabilize Africa. When we did that, we militarized the army of Mali. We then went to Russia. We came with so many weapons. We went to confront the terrorist because now we know that the terrorist's mother is no longer in Mali. When we encountered the terrorists there, we taught them a lesson. You know what happened? The United Nations Human Rights Commission raised a red flag with an outcry that we in Mali are abusing human rights. You know the human rights for whom? For their children. Those terrorists that they formed and left there are the people that they're crying of that we are abusing their human rights. But when they are terrorizing and destabilize Africa every day for the advantage of the West to get cheaper resources and cheaper labor in Africa, they don't complain. They don't say anything. You will not hear. Imagine a journalist from Europe. We are looking for terrorists. But a journalist from Europe can come with a camera and go and do a documentary inside a danger zone where there are terrorists. Where did he go to the numbers of the terrorists? How does he or she have an access with the terrorists? Their non-governmental organizations are comfortable in the terrorist zone. What are they doing there? They are looking points and points and points and tagging where there are mineral resources and extract using their, those terrorists to fund them with those money, destabilizing the people of Africa. Double standards. Imagine those terrorists, if they don't come in Africa armed, they will come as the journalists, as oppositional parties, as the advocates of human rights with their international organizations. If we arrest them on spying on us, you will hear the outcry from their masters saying there is a human abuse, human rights abuse in Africa. But they've kept Julian Assange for a long time, after he has exposed them, and they even threatened to bomb ICC if ICC issues a warrant of arrest to any American citizen. Double standards. There was a humanitarian crisis in Nigeria in 2020 that started at Lekki. The United Nations said nothing about it. There have been systematic killings, assassinations, genocides even across Nigeria and the rest of Africa. All these years, the United Nations have not said anything. And now, there's been a military coup in Niger Republic. The UN have given their approval for ECOWAS to intervene militarily in the situation. I don't have anything against that. But my question is this. This intervention, is it intervention to save who? The Nigerian people, I hope I'm even pronouncing their name well. Or is it the Nigerian government? It has now become abundantly clear that the mission of the United Nations in Africa is one. To install, ensure, and preserve governments across as many African states as possible that can guarantee the continued exploitation of Africa. Every other thing is secondary including the life of Kunle on the streets of Lagos. If you didn't know this, know it now, that for extreme wealth to be created, abject poverty must exist somewhere. Because tell me why the people will be suffering and dying and the UN says nothing. But when the people revolt and take their country back, you will now come up with a humanitarian endeavor to intervene. That humanitarian took you for neck there. Intervene on whose behalf? The people that have been suffering and begging you since? Can you now see that all those tagging that we have been tagging the US government to come and help us and all those petitions we have been signing online for UN to intervene is just a waste of data? Moral of the story, these people do not care about you. Even if your government or anyone else turns against you and your people to slaughter you, it is more profitable to just log into YouTube and be watching Mr. Macaroni in the face of death than to tag any Western institution for help. Yeah, this video for Nigeria. Nigerians.
you better be careful. You know, we as black people scatter around the world. We still remember slavery. You know? And if you want to join with the colonizers, if there is a war in Africa, if French launch any war against Africans, and you Nigerians join it, we, the black people, I know a lot of black people, would come and kill some of you Nigerians. Yeah? Any Nigerians that support this with French, with the French government, the colonizers, yeah? We are coming to Africa just as though people volunteer to fight in Ukraine. We are coming. We black people from the other side of the world are coming to fight and kill every Nigerians that support the French. We don't forget where we're coming from as black people. And some of you Nigerians, look at your president. Look at your whole president. But when you leave Nigeria, you go to America, you go to England, you go to Canada, you want to act as if you're so intellectual. Especially try to show off on African Americans. When you leave, when you don't have a good president, just be careful if any Nigerians that launch any attack on any African country, we are coming to fight. Because we want to get rid of you who try to set us back as black people. Yes, we are coming. Millions of black people are going to pour into Africa to just to kill out some of you. Kill both you, the French, who try to set back Africa in any shape or form. So Nigerians, you better set your government straight and don't try to set back Africa in with no colonizers because we are going to butcher you people. Because we still hung, we still angry and upset about slavery. And if you want to set back Africans that way, we are coming. We are coming by the thousands. And you already have Boko Haram there that don't support your government. So we're going to come. So just divert, just change up your wheels. We are coming. Yes, we are coming. Africa is on fire. Africa is in trouble. Wherever you are, my people, black people, all in the world, anywhere in the world, we need you to wake up. We need you to see what is going on in Africa. We need you to talk. I am Chief Obidike, the host for this show. Let's talk about it. We need to talk. We need to dialogue with each other now. We cannot afford to just sit still. We cannot longer afford to stay asleep. This is our time your time and we're going to begin this show by bringing in some highly involved people all over the world who are calling in we ask you to call in we just call the number you know the number call in i have a guest very special guest in the studio hey, that's enough the rest of you can call in please call in you have the number, there it is, 202-250-0001. Call in. Let's talk about it. That's the name of this show. We now have to really be very careful. Black people are in the position now to remove the people that are colonizing Africa. They are now in the position to say enough is enough. I don't know if you know what that means, that enough is enough. But if you don't know what that means, it means that the young people in Africa are waking up and they are waking up very quickly. They are kicking out the colonial countries, namely, France, United States, 
all other colonies, the British, those people that have colonized Africa for many, many years. Be ready. And I know that every single one of us, no matter where we are, and I greet you, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, we are not sitting still anymore. Look at this. A young man, 34 years old, takes control of his nation, of his country, and of his people. And he's saying clearly, they are no longer going to sleep. The old men are almost finished. You have to take care of us. Make sure that you do, because we have kept the country maybe not as good as it should be. Because too many older people gave up the country. Literally just for the sake of money, for the sake of whatever they saw at the time, they gave up the country. But the natural resources, the natural resources, we're going to talk about the natural resources. Well, who are these countries that are now suddenly in this century, at this time, beginning to say enough is enough? We've mentioned them. You see them, the country in a map. Look at Africa. Beautiful Africa. Beautiful Africa. How much damage have they done to us? And how much more are we going to tolerate? I say no more. And apparently, my brother and my sisters, there are people that are saying the same thing. They're saying the same thing in Chad. That enough is enough. In Sudan, in Niger, in Burkina Faso, all over, slowly but surely, words to the colonial people, so-called, some people call masters, and some people have a different name for them. Perhaps one of you guests that are going to come on the line will tell us some of the names that you would like to call them. Good names. Now, let me uh, please explain something. Uh, what you say is your responsibility. So please be careful. Um, we don't want anybody using foul language, whether it's in French or whether it's in English. So please uh, caution yourself, speak clearly, because we want to hear what you have to say. This is a community meeting. And because of that, we don't want you to say the wrong things or things that will be used against us or used against you. So please make sure that you stay within the boundaries of common sense. Too many things are happening. Too many people are dying. We've lost and are losing so many more. And at some point, we have to say enough is enough. I'm ready for the first guest. And if the first guest, let me tell you something. There are some people that are very bright and very quiet in their, in their demeanors, in their way. Uh, my guest in the studio, we call him Doc. We, we, you know, we, we, my brother is such a good friend. Sometimes I call him some other names. None of your business. That's just the way I am, and that's just the way we relate. Doc Tonyse is here. My brother, good morning to you. How are you, sir? Thank you. Good morning. I'm okay. Thank you. Well, here we are. Africa is on fire. We have problems. 
Bigger problems than poverty, maybe even bigger problems than slavery. Are we going to war? And why? Talk to your people, my brother. Talk to us. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are. Again, my name is Reverend Dr. Police. I would like the world to know, yes, Africa is on fire. But it's about time we're on fire. <clears throat> It's about time we're on fire. It's about time we are on fire. Um, you see, there isn't much to say anymore. Many warriors have got, many, much water have crossed under the bridge. For centuries, Africa has been not just exploited, decimated. Yeah. Human resource, many killed there mm. from leaders who tried to walk in the interests of their citizens mm. and get exterminated. Mm. We have the list. From those who have tried to run away from home and go to the West, first they exploited visa money, medical, you know, the rest. And many are denied billions of dollars or Naira are every year taken from people who apply for visas and purposely they will not be given visa. The money is not returned. Mm. And this goes on and on for many years. Mm. And those who succeed, hundreds of thousands drown in the ocean. Mm. Our women cannot get married. They are committing suicide because, because of the fact that there is no job, no industries, graduates, men cannot get a job. Therefore, they can't get married. You cannot look for somebody else to feed if you're not, you know, able to feed yourself. Hmm. I know that I'm told by doing telehealth, practicing telehealth for over 20 years across entire Africa. I have access to knowledge that is not very obvious to many people because I'm able to reach people all over as remote as they can be. Mm. Women are committing suicide because they can't get married. Mm. I've had two sisters commit suicide mm. because mm. they reach monopause, they were glad just never get a job. I can go on and on and off. I want to make it very short and concise. And I'm addressing the Western nations, Britain, America, Russia, France, Germany. Does any of you have any right to tell us why you think that our resources given to us by God belongs to you? Hmm. That you've been killing our people for centuries. We are not known to be warmongers. We are not known to fight even among each other. When I checked in history, you have applied the law of entropy. A system that is not that wants to be in its equilibrium has to destabilize its environment. Now we know the game beyond. And the solution is simple. Let us play on a you know, a level playing field. You want our resources, whatever it is. Can you please, we sit across the table peacefully and negotiate and you pay the fair price for it and we use it to develop our own people. We don't have light. We don't have industries. We don't have all essential human necessities. Hmm. If it was possible, you would have taken oxygen away from Africans. Yes. If it was in your reach, you would have taken oxygen away from black men. Some you have succeeded in doing so. We don't want to war. 
we are in the month of the celebration of the anniversary of Hiroshima nuclear bomb. We believe that the aftermath of it is part of what we are going through the climate change that everyone is suffering now. Why do we have to fight? Or why do some people think that some people population need to be depleted? The creator of life, Almighty God, has given enough resources to sustain over 50 or even 100 billion people. And we are under 8 billion. And some people think that some people are dispensable. Africans are saying no. Mm. Enough is not enough. Mm. Enough is more than enough. Mm. Enough is more than enough. And we are not asking for war. You are the ones that also ask for war. Because you have nuclear. We are not afraid of it anymore. We are not intimidated anymore. We don't want to fight. The wave of what's going on in West Africa and Africa will never subside. It's going to be sustained. No amount of intimidation. I lived in Chicago with Tinimbu. America, you did the condemn, I mean, condone a criminal in America. You went and installed him a president in Nigeria and thinking it's going to happen, it's never going to happen. Certain things are better left unsaid. For now, I want our people, no fight. Let us not fight. There's no need for that. There's more than enough resources in the world to sustain the entire population and beyond. Mm. Let the Western world come clean. Come clean. Sit across the table. Those days have gone and gone forever. Then you will find a stooge, a puppet in Africa that will work in your interest as against the interest of our people. Mm. Never again. It's not going to happen. Never again. No more. Mm. You will kill them before you kill them. Because that's what you do. You kill those people that don't want to work in our interest. And install those that work in our interest. The reverse is the case. Because we didn't know this, this, the, the, the game before. Now the whole game, we know. So the only option, no other option, is for us to come together. Sit across the table and negotiate. And let us look at uranium, oil, gas. Not you coming to meet few people and you pay them. You take a pipe and take our oil and go to a place. The millions, hundreds of millions of our people are suffering. There's no single day, no single week. Go and ask the funeral from Sydney, America. I do the research. There's no single week two or three corpses do not leave this country, America, to Nigeria. And none of them was up to 60 years. And that's because for 40, 30, 40 years they have been here. They've been working two, three jobs to sustain not their family, the whole village. Because their people back home have no resource whatsoever to fend for themselves. I can go on and on and on. And you will, my brother. What we need to do is to sit down the Western country. We are not afraid anymore of you. We know the history. We have the books. We have read them. But we don't want history to repeat itself. We don't want war. We don't want nuclear. What we need is to sit down peacefully. There's no peace without justice. Justice must precede peace. And I'm going to talk to UN directly. UN, I think the best thing that African countries all pull out of UN. All of them. All of them. Because UN, God knows that nobody has violated human rights in this world than you in Africa. I read, we read, we read. We see. Nobody has sustained poverty in Africa than you. ISIS, International Criminal Court. How many Western, Western leaders have you prosecuted? It's only Africans that you chase as if you are doing something. But we are here alive. 
seeing the human rights violation everywhere in Western countries, every day, you haven't done anything about it. It's only Africa. Well, if we have to coexist in this world, please, let's sit down for justice case, for peace case, and negotiate, renegotiate. Trust me, it's never going to have business as usual. Never, ever. And for France, for France, if you don't have a shame, please go in the closet and look at yourself in the mirror. If you think you're going to be running around Africa, never. We support 100% the wave of what is going on in West Africa. We support 100%. Enough is more than enough. Are we angry? Why not? Why shouldn't we be angry? Who among us have not lost family members in tens and hundreds that never reached 10 years, 20 years, 40 years? How many children survive in Africa? How many have books to read? How many have light, clean water? You're taking our resources and we're going to sit forever. No, enough is more than enough. At the hands of France, at the hands of the United Nations, at the hands of other countries that have been using and usurping our resources, taken by force, at those people's hands, many of them members of the United Nations, as you have said, France has 14 countries that it has colonized by force and taken the natural resources by force. Is this conflict now or this revolution now that is now in the hands of more younger generation, is it about natural resources? at a different level because they've been taking it for years. But these younger generations are saying no more. Doc, what is this new revelation, revolution, excuse me, revolution, what is it about? Is it about poverty? Is it about our women that are being so mistreated and for those that we have not stood up to protect, it is wise to say we are sorry. But Doc, there's been so many talk now to find a reason for this revolution now. Is it about our resources? So all of, the, all of the above, to go to detail, um, I will have to borrow from the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible. It says there is time for everything. This is the time. You see, one of the problems of the Western world is that they think that they, they, they run this world. You know, the God who created this world still runs it. The founding fathers of this country, at least two, they were Christians like us, but they were different type of Christians. They were what we call dazed Christians. They believe in God, yes, but they believe that God created the world and turned it loose and backed it, and it doesn't look at what happens here. Mm. That's why the Western country is running like what? The lions, tigers, in the Serengeti. Mm. Kill whoever you can kill and what you want. But me and you are what you call me, you know, are Christians who believe that God still controls what goes on here. So there's time for everything. He comes in now and says, Enough is enough. It's enough for enough. Mm. The suffering back home in Africa is such that it has never been this before in the history of mankind. That's your answer. When I was young and you, you know the type of school we attended. You know the type of healthcare we had. 
you know, the type of roads we had, you know, the type of uh, our industries. Clothes were being made in Aba everywhere. There's practically none, none. Everything has been decimated. So, and our youth are running out and we are not welcoming them. Those of us here are nothing but exiled British, Western exiled, what? Slaves. Our children here were born in slavery. That's what it is. And then what else are they doing? They turn around and tell you, Africa is poor. Africa is poor. Look at them. They are very poor. And you are not welcome here. You are not allowed here. You are not accepted here. And many of us came here. We didn't come to stay per se. Mm -hmm. One dollar was 54 Kobo. The last time I remitted the money, in 1977, to come here at a Marketers Bank in Yavan Lego. One dollar was 54 coke. One dollar to this almost what? 100,000. 1,000. 1,000. Why should our money be measured against dollar? Hmm. Value? <laughs> or anybody else's dollar? Else. So, to answer your question, things have deteriorated to the point that is completely subhuman. Hmm. Our people are living at subhuman level. So we don't want fights. We are not asking them to fight. We don't fight. I have sight and see if there are evils or you know, we had fight among us. No, until Britain came in 1914 to forcibly amalgamate them, which was not a country. Nigeria has been a British empire. For the longest. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's over. Now, in my final conclusion at this point, we are not going to continue to draw what has happened. Let the bygone be gone. Let what has happened in the past, let them come and say, we apologize. Mm -hmm. I mean it. Not what Macron as mm -hmm. German and German this was it. Let them come and say, we are what? Apologize. And then we reconcile. Now, no more force to come and take our stuff. Hey. No more force. Let's sit down peacefully. Mm. This is our commodity. This is our own thing. Come and talk to us. We do what? We give you a fair price, mm. market price. Mm. But if you think that you're going to have another Buhari, another Tirimbu, you're going to have all those people to come and be a Suji, never again. But, Doc, let Another me thing. ask you. Let me say this. There are, you heard our brother in Mali, anger. Serious anger, and he's ready to do anything to sustain Mali away from those who are there to continue the colonization. Anger. You heard our brother from Nigeria. Anger. Frustration. No more. No more colonial people. Anger. 10,000 miles away in the Caribbean, we hear a message. And this message are more mercenary than anything else. That they will move and come to Africa by the millions. The sons and great, great grandsons of slaves, that they will call and come to Africa and begin a confrontation with African people if they continue to support the colonial colonizers of Africa. You've heard it. Doc, how can we, we got, I, I know we have some callers coming in. I, I, I'll be right with you, but I do want to get this point made. I got you. Just, just stay tuned. Doc, the frustration, the anger over all the atrocities that is that the colonizers have taken. All those European countries that have gone to Africa and have abused the entire continent and are still abusing it. Doc. Well, 
Do you think that there are poss it is possible that we can negotiate peacefully with these animals, with these people that are coming in into our continent and abusing it? The, the worst mistake they will make is to think that we're going to give them a solution. The message of these people we have said that are frustrated like all of us, that message is for two people. It's Western leaders, United Nations, International Monetary Fund. We have actually known the people that have enslaved us. That message is to them. To know that the ball has changed, the game has changed. That message is also to the, the message is also to the stooges in African countries who call themselves politicians. The message is to the stooges and the puppets in Africa who, because of their own selfishness and greediness, have fought for centuries and worked for the interests of the West people, Western people instead of our own people. Hmm. There are two things that every living thing, ant, plant, and human beings, and everything, two things they live by. One is self-preservation. That's why you eat every day, not because you're hungry. You want to see the next day. Number two is self-perpetuation. Looking after your own kind. Mm. So we all human beings. We should be looking after the what? The well-being of all human beings. And we have enough resources to do that. Mm. My why brother. Should somebody be wearing a ring of $10 million <laughs> in one finger. One ring, $10 million mm. in one finger. <laughs> That came from Africa. Mm -hmm. Then at the same time, 10 million African kids can will go to bed that night without eating one square meal. Mm. My so brother, let us come for justice. I hear you well. There are people that the message is for them to realize that you have uncovered their game, or rather, God has uncovered the games for us. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the internet. Thank God for the social media. We have you have been uncovered. So let us sit down. We're not asking for war fight. Let's sit down across the table and let those stages and puppets step and step aside. Hmm. Let them step aside because the Western people threaten to kill them if they don't do what they say. Now we are going to threaten. So they are now into catch 22. Hmm. Well, catch, to catch to 22. Us. Catch 22. 23. That means that if I don't listen to us, you get killed. You listen to the West, you get killed. It's that simple. Hmm. So that's what they've been doing to them for years. I'm going to move myself and this program to talk to a professor. You remember the chain, the, the slavery. To I'm bringing you in. There is now this young man in Mali. <laughs> and this young man in Mali have set the entire continent of Africa on fire. He have waken up all the slumbering black people, not just in Mali, not just in Nigeria, not just in Burkina Faso, not just in Chad, worldwide, all the way to the Caribbean, and hopefully, black people in America. I am going to ask you, my dear brother, Professor Aka, welcome to Let's Talk About It. You heard it, you've been hearing it. What can we do about this problem that has now come about? Welcome, sir. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for this opportunity which I appreciate immensely. Uh, I have listened to previous speakers, including my dear brother, uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Onyise. I, I, I want us to see exactly where we are at this point and why uh, the, the, the title for this show is uh, Fire, uh, Revolution Fire all across the world, not just in the African continent, but all across the world. And we're dealing with something that has never happened for a very, very long time. Long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. The juncture we find ourselves in the world, okay, 
uh, where people uh, in the past who were inattentive are becoming very, very attentive. Uh, the awareness level is exceedingly high. Uh, and we can see that awareness all across us uh, in the social media, whether we're talking about Facebook, Twitter, uh, whatever it is. Uh, that's where we are now at this very important juncture in history. And I like to go back to Nigeria and look at what has happened in Nigeria uh, since the end of the so called Civil War in 1970. Now, what we're seeing now is the incompetence of those who have run Nigeria for the past 50 years. Plus. We're talking about uh, the Fulani hegemony and the second fiddlers, uh, the Yoruba. This is where we see them live in Nigeria, uh, where completely the whole system is broken down. Every single aspect that we call a system in Nigeria, uh, the educational system, the healthcare system that uh, the Chinese have very eloquently talked about, uh, the economic system, everything is broken down. And this is the result of the incompetence of a group of people who've been running affairs in Nigeria for more than 50 years. The quality of leadership under the so-called Fourth Republic is screaming to the heavens, uh, exceedingly poor. And, and that's what we're and seeing here, here, the lack of here, social, lack of the, the, the failure the of social failure justice in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Uh, the economic uh, immigration that our people our have, people faced, have faced, faced, all in the name of democracy. democracy. So, so, and people are saying people enough, 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 because of the awareness level. And there's also an irony that I see here. We're talking about a possible uh, uh, removing the coup that happened in Niger Republic. And who is the one talking about going into Niger? Somebody who stole them, who took a mandate that uh, competitors, his competitors in the other political parties uh, consider a stolen mandate. And uh, what an irony that uh, what you might regard as a coup, a civilian coup in Nigeria. Or of a different kind, but a coup. Yeah, it's a coup. Yeah. What you have in Nigeria, May 20, whatever, uh, in May, that uh, the, the selection that was not an election, is a coup. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so you have the beneficiary of that coup accusing the young men in Nigeria Republic of a coup. That's what some people call the kettle calling the pot black. Okay. And you're talking about removing the leadership structure there. When you're not, your mandate is still under challenge by the judiciary in Nigeria. So I want us to see that irony. And uh, uh, but I think I want to stop at this point by just giving us the general context that we're dealing with. And this is what I want our people to do, because Karl Marx talked about how we analyze the world, philosophers analyzing the world without changing the world. How do we change the world? And this is where I want our listeners to come in. Okay? We want you to ask questions, please. Quiz these leaders, ask them questions. Nobody has been asking them very difficult questions of the kind that you need to be doing. Now, now, ask them questions ask and demand the changes you want uh, to change your condition. So that's where I want to stop at this point. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doug. Professor Saka, thank you. You know, you. Uh, I'm not going to let you go that easily. No. <laughs> There's something outside of Nigeria that is now becoming an example. This... Yeah, this this uh, what, what we call it, Doctor. When you say this uh, revolution that just took place in Nigeria, do you see that happening in Nigeria? Why not? Will Niger Let me ask you even better. Let will Nigeria go to war in order to sustain the people that 
or helping Tinubu, which has been said to be France, which has been said to be British, which has been said even to be United States. That they are the ones that actually put him in office. But well, what just took place in Niger, is that an example of what could possibly happen in Nigeria? Very possible. Very possible. All bets are off where we are now because of the awareness level we see, not just in Nigeria, but all across the world. Uh, for so long, people have been cheated and they're not, they're not aware that they're being cheated. But all of a sudden, they're all wisened up. And they're confronting those who have been their detractors, the people who have been putting them down for this long time. Okay, so, uh, and once you have this kind of scenario coming together, all factors coming together, all bets are up. Um, I, I, I cannot rule out the possibility of some social uprising in Nigeria. I mean, if a coup could happen in Mali, if it could happen in um, uh, Nigeria Republic, very close to Nigeria, Shaz, uh, close to 2,000 uh, square miles of borders with Nigeria. Uh, why not Nigeria? Except that where we are now in Nigeria, I don't know whether there is a consensus uh, for a coup. But I want you to keep in mind that what we have had since 1999 under the so-called Fourth Republic, it's, it's a very nominal democracy, it's a fake democracy, it's very, very similar, very close to a coup. Uh, Abbasan Joe handing over, uh, handpicking uh, his appointees, uh, Musa Yaradua and then um, uh, Jonathan, and then uh, Buhari doing exactly the same. Tinibu, this was not an election. It was not even an election. This was a complete stolen mandate that we saw before our two eyes. Um, he did not win uh, the first uh, 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 Abuja. And uh, so uh, these are the issues we are faced with. Well, many people in this country. You don't know what happens next. Anything could happen in Nigeria. The economic immigration that our people are going through now, the lack of social justice for more than 50 years, the exclusion of a particular group, uh, it's, it's too much. So, all bets are off with respect to Nigeria. Uh, social uprising, why not? Whether you call it a coup or uh, whatever name. Well, there's so many people that are calling so far, but I do want to bring your attention to what we have been hearing. There is anger. Serious anger. The type of anger that generally creates a revolution and maybe to the point of war. This is what we're hearing. Do you think that that anger from Burkina Faso, from people in, you know, beautiful Caribbean countries, that what they are saying um, will actually raise the, well, so what should we call it? Will it raise the level for war? Nigeria has been at war for a long time. Boko Hara is a war going on in Nigeria since 2009. Uh, you have bandits all over the north. So Nigeria actually has been at war. What we're talking about is how brutal that war is going to be. Um, is it going to go beyond the scale that we see already? Uh, only time will tell. Uh, an angry mm -hmm. man is a, a hungry man is an angry man, as Bob Bali once said. And that's where we are now. Uh, the economic immaturation uh, that our people are enduring right now. Keep in mind that under Buhari, Nigeria overtook India as uh, the poverty headquarters of the world. Of the world. Uh, yes, that's where we are. So you have a lot of angry people. Uh, you have a situation. This is a time bomb. Nigeria is a time bomb waiting to explode. The awareness level that 
regarding the incompetence of Fulani after more than uh, 50 years of misrule, uh, joined by uh, the, the Yoruba sympathizers and uh, second fiddlers. So people, what are you going to do? Gas prices are up. People can't even eat. Uh, my brother, Dr. Nyese, talked about square meal. I don't know whether people are even eating. They look emaciated. And uh, for how long is this going to go on? That's the mm -hmm. question. Uh, but Nigeria has been in a war uh, for, for a long time, going back to war. Yes. Yeah, that is how, war. how brutal that war is going to get. And I, mm -hmm. I can bet you that um, that possibility is wide open. Well, let me ask uh, both of you. Uh, ECOWAS, both of you know of this organization, the Economic Community of West Africa. ECOWAS have decided that they will get into war if Mali does not if uh, Niger does not uh, resolve its problem and put the removed president back in office. They have now declared, just yesterday or day before yesterday, ECOWAS had a meeting in Abuja and they have declared that they will go to war. Although the Senate said no. Well, for both of you, what do you think will happen if ECOWAS and all its members, its 15 members, well, some of the, uh, I think three of the members have been removed or have removed themselves from ECOWAS. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Uh, let me, let me ask, as, as, you know, kind of uh, give you some uh, my own personal view and answer. Any head of state of any country in Africa in the so-called ECOWAS, so-called ECOWAS, that sanctions are proved to go to war, to Niger, to whose interests are they fighting for? Niger told you one day new colonists to go. And you say they're going to stay, so you have to go too. That's number one. He has to go too. Any head of state, we are watching. In fact, ECOWAS lost credibility, in my view, forever for endorsing Tinimbu and making him chairman of ECOWAS. Hmm. That's when it tells you that, that anybody that endorsed Tinimbu, a criminal that I knew, I grew up in Chicago, is what? That person is not fit to be head of state in any way in Africa. Hmm. Two, if ECOWAS ever ventured to go to war in Asia, what they have declared is those who are for new colonies and those who are not, are, you know, the youth, we all be, they will all be involved. So hmm. it will be a, a, a war without front. That is why all other countries who are against the new colonies to go are throwing in the towel with Asia. So if they know what they are doing, of course, they are not leaders of Africa. They are misleaders of Africa. The misleaders. Mis misleaders of Africa. Mm -hmm. PLO Lumumba called them the other day. The videos on YouTube, thieves. They are all thieves. He said they are all thieves. And that's absolutely true what they are. Any head of state that does not support the cleaning of Africa of the colonies and new colonies, it's not fit to stay. The youth of Africa is galvanizing to go after them. There will be no limit. This is the beginning of what you call revolution. Hmm. Tell me which other coup is worse than what happened in Nigeria with Inimbu. Which other coup? The difference is that cabal, criminals did that coup, and over here soldiers did it. What's the difference? Hmm. So the point is that they have to listen. Because we are hearing what the children are saying. I'm talking about children who graduated with PhD and master's degree. I have not had a single job one day. Many have drowned trying to, not as somebody told me. In the mm. capacity of my profession for years, 
I know personally, mm -hmm. I know two brothers who have drowned trying to cross. Why shouldn't we be angry? Believing that the, the would, grass is cleaner have, on the other I side. I prefer to stay and help people as God called me do what I'm doing and sitting here. Mm -hmm. It's just that this is perhaps the best medicine I can ever practice in my life. Is there something that we can say to people in Africa? Stop trying to cross the line. Stop trying to How find you, green, the uh, green pasture. How can you tell and then, them that? What are they going to eat? Hmm. How can you tell them that? The West is taking, do you know what you're saying? The West is taking their property and telling them they are poor and telling them they can't come to their place. And we're telling the West to go. And somebody who called himself a head of state is saying, no, they shouldn't go. Go and put him back. Well, Bernie so Sanders, they, they Bernie talk. Sanders once said, that there is a reason for countries, uh, governments to be overthrown. Yeah, I, have, I saw the video. He, it's amazing. I, I, I wish they would it, play it if they can find exactly Bernie what, Sanders' reason why the United States overthrow. That's what I'm telling you. They mm -hmm. think that the black people, uh, Africans stupid. are subhuman. They're mm -hmm. not human. Mm -hmm. They think that they are dispensable. Mm -hmm. They can take their resources and go and better their own place and turn around and call us the, uh, 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 um, poor people. Now, leave our resources, or if you want it, let us negotiate the price. Mm. We use the work we earn to put light in our place. Better our own roads like your own. You, Get clean water for you're our people. A good, you're Get a good man. For our people. You're Get a good man. So mm. what is wrong with that? Well, you're a good man, but I What's don't see it. I just don't but see it. Them anymore. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, they've been kicked out. French army have been kicked out. Burkina Faso have kicked out the French. There are so many other countries that are kicking the pad, the colonialists who have been taking over the countries uh, many times uh, for years. They're kicking them out. But uh, 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 Professor Aka, I know that you would like to wage in in this uh, issue, but I want you to in your in your presentation consider booking a fossil group the wagner group i'm sure that you as well as many other people mercenaries across the country we would like to touch on russia russia's intrusion russia's involvement russia saying to hell with telling france back off russia telling the united states enough back off and China and Russia are now teaming up to move into those countries, as we have seen it, either to assist or to become a new slave master. I don't know. But Professor Aka, come in, please, and and, and uh, wage in on this discussion. Yeah, th th this is this is where uh, the awareness the unprecedented awareness in the world that I talked about. This, this is where it comes in. Uh, the U.S. for a long time has been playing second fiddle when it comes to uh, policy towards Africa, policies towards Africa. So you have a situation where they say, well, let the colonial overlords be in charge. And mm. uh, we're going to come behind them. And that's what we saw during the so-called civil war. When uh, the U.S. said, look, Britain, you colonize Nigeria, you take care of the mess, correct your mess. Uh, most recently, that also we see in France, the U.S. will say, well, you French people, you were there initially, you are still there, you are the new colonial authorities, uh, will come after you. So the U.S. has to stop this. The reason why the U.S. will have to stop this is because China is there waiting, and Russia is also waiting. And by the way, these are all members of the Security Council. So that's what we're faced with. The world has changed. Uh, I don't think China is coming, and I don't hold brief for China or any other country. Uh, they're not coming as the new colonizers. They're coming to do business. They're more business-oriented in their approach to foreign policy. So China is coming, Russia also uh, still smarting from the collapse of the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union. They want a shock. Mm -hmm. 
what is going on in Africa. That's how complicated it has become. But I, I want to go back again to the possibility of uh, ECOWAS. By the way, more than 50% of ECOWAS is Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria controls more than 50% of ECOWAS resources, including if you need a so-called peacekeeping. And look at the irony about Nigeria being a world known peacekeeper. They keep peace that they don't have at home. Can you imagine the contradictions you see in Nigeria? But the point <laughs> that more than 50% of ECOWAS is Nigeria. So there's no surprise that Tinubu, whose election is severely being contested in Nigeria, was made chair of ECOWAS. No surprise about that. But Tinubu, if his president takes orders from Nigeria, it's not from ECOWAS, an association of independent countries, now, if ECOWAS talks about going into Nigeria, they are bluffing. They can't carry it out. Just see it as no more than bluff. Uh, right now, they are trying to engage uh, the coup leaders in negotiation uh, about a possible way out. They are not going to use force. They don't have the authority. Tinubu does not have authority to use force. The Senate, the Yeye Senate of Nigeria, uh, the, the rubber stamp Senate says he can go to war. That's important. But even more important, the hegemonists in Nigeria, those who own Nigeria, who believe they own Nigeria in the north, are saying you can go to war against our relatives across the border. Uh, they walk with them. Each time there is an election in Nigeria, they cross the porous border and come in and vote. When there is a census, they cross the border and vote. So uh, if Tinubu goes to war, whatever uh, support, uh, very, very limited support right now that he gets from the North, we just frizzle away. Uh, and we're not there, the Igbos are not supportive of what he's going to do. So if he goes to war, he better carry his AK in front of him and lead that war. He's on his own. I uh, don't find that possible that he can carry one. <laughs> the AK-47 is not a, a light weapon for a very fragile man. Uh, but uh, I, I like to welcome Ken Chukwu. Ken Ken, my dear brother. Uh, now, nah, because, uh, uh, let me question, uh, how are you? Ah, there you are. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm doing good. Ken, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, please, so please tell everybody uh, where you are, uh, where you're calling from, and then weigh in on this issue of uh, uh, Mali, Chad, and that, and the uh, problems that we're having in in um, Niger. Uh, where is it going, Ken? Where are we? Is this going to elevate to the point of war? We know the revolution is here, but is it going to elevate to the point of real war? Welcome, Mr. Chief Wokijike. Welcome to Let's Talk About It. Thank you very much, moderator. And thank you for having me. I'm very sorry that I came in late because I was driving somewhere. So I couldn't um, join up um, because I'm on the steering. So um, my name is Ken Nachuku. I'm from Enugu State in Biafra land, and I live in Germany. So um, to talk about the topic of today, I think um, Chuku Kika Biama has done it all for us. He has shown everything to the Biafrans on how we get liberated and uh, from the hands of the colonial masters. This mm -hmm. is just um, a sign, but um, I hope that our people are saying this sign just the way I see it. Because um, what is actually happening in the entire global world is a chaos at the moment. So I will just make an example of um, an organization that I am a member of, which is Life Force Organization. They are fighting for humanity and they want to restore the entire global. This has been a fight in the United States. Maybe most of you in the United States have, might have heard about this very organization. 
So this is exactly what Mazin Namde Kanu tried to do in, 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 the, in that very contraption called Nega area for the Biafrans to be liberated. So what is happening today in Africa is just an opportunity that is being on the ground for any part of Africa that want to be liberated from the colonial master to have their way. So now this is the time we all have to come together. Saying that we have to come together means now Africans have to work and collaborate with each other to fight these foreign powers. And how do we do that? Is to support our own. In any of the Af in any of the African country where there is a problem that the West wants to make any problem in that country, it is time for we Africans to support that very African country. And this is the only way we have for now. And this is the chance. This is the revolution we are talking about because these people don't want us to be, they don't want us to live. This is why Africa is what it is today. There was, there was a news that I, I, I came across online, I don't know if it is real, where Joe Biden was speaking in, um, what, what do they call it, in BBC. I was very shocked, saying that a dead man was ruling Nigeria for the past six years. Why he made that comment, I don't know. That video is online, in BBC. Then I said, but Mazin Nandikanu said this, and nobody take it as if it is true. But now it's coming out from Joe Biden and being broadcast in BBC. So that means they knows all these shits that are happening in Africa. So to talk <laughs> about to talk about Niger and these other countries that militaries have taken over. Mm -hmm. My problem there is I'm just begging God, Chuko Kikabiama, that it doesn't happen in that contraption called Nega area. Because if it happens that the military have to take over in Nigeria, that means we are done. Because the people in the military today are only the Fulanese, which are even those people who come from the Futajalon. They are mm. the military we have in Nigeria today. So if they mm -hmm. take over, we will find it more difficult to even gain our freedom that we are fighting for. Because these people, they have sold their conscience they are working for the Western world, you know? So no matter what the Niger have done today, I tell you, if they go into, um, um, let me say, discussion now, they will still dance to the tone of the Western world. We are the people who only have the power to stand and say no to whatever the Western world is doing, which is Biafra. And this is our opportunity for us to fight strong in this very... Um, um, issue of the liberation of the Biafran. This is our Ken, you, have, you, have, you have spoken well. For those people that don't understand, Igbo, I just said to Ken, you have spoken the truth. We appreciate it very much. And thank you so much for the uh, views that you have given. Um, but let me ask you one more thing, because uh, you're calling from quite uh, a long, long area. Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger have kicked out France. Okay. And as we said, to kick out the United States. What you're thinking about that? That is quite right. What they are doing, if they will stand by their by their actions. You know, these people are so trickish. It won't be easy for the Westerners to leave Africa just like that. You know, hmm. um, let me just make an example of something. During the time of COVID, I know so many people didn't believe that because um, it's still running in our system that um, the Western always look for one poison to make sure they bring those people they are holding down that they still have them where they have where they want them to be. So this is why COVID came about. People were injected with different substances so they can't reason properly. So a lot of people we we, we just leave the planet because they want to rule the world. This deep state this deep state, you know? So what Niger, Burkina Faso have done, they have done the right, they have taken the right step. But the question is, 
are they going to hold by what they have done by their action? Hmm. Will they be bought over? Will the Western will the Western come tomorrow to promise them whatsoever or to try to trick them with what? Because these people have been using our brain. This is the problem. So if if they can stand by their action, then Africa is good to go. Then let every African country start taking the same action that um, these three countries have taken. I tell you, before the end of next year, Africa will be a very a different place to talk about. Hmm. So this is just the You've fact. Spoken well. You have spoken okay. very well. Let okay. me thank you for appearing and, and speaking as you have done. And uh, I would like to move my <laughs> my guest in the studio. He really would like to make some statement, but he, he also noticed that the calls are coming in and we have to give them all the opportunity. Oh, Hamadike, I hear that you are here. Veteran Mosu, I hear that you are here. Chief Obidike is talking to you. Let's talk about it. Oh, Hamadike, where are you? Welcome to Let's Talk About It. What is going on in your mind in reference to Niger? In reference to what is happening in Burkina Faso. Ohamadike, the veteran, what is going on in your mind on what is happening in Africa? Africa is on fire. Africa is on fire. Ohamadike, talk to me. Ohamadike. Are you there? I know you may, I hope you did not get disconnected. But if you did, please call back. If there is any veteran who can put a stamp on what is going on in Africa today, it is this next guest. We call him IG. He is online. You can see he is prepared, ready. My dear brother, I welcome you. I welcome you with open arms, open hearts. You have heard some brothers from Mali angrily have spoken about what the colonials are trying to do in Africa this time what they have done. Burkina Faso, you have heard, even Caribbean brothers in Caribbean, Caribbean island, because there are millions of black people in the world, they have spoken. Now it's your time to speak to them. They are angry. They are pissed off, but they have never seen a pissed off, angry black man like you. Anywhere in the world, if you've never seen a man that is so angry about what is happening to black people all over the world, it is this man, my dear brother, Good to see you. Welcome. Please, what is your view on what is going on? Africa is on fire. Okay, thank you for having me on your program today. Chief. <clears throat> yes, Africa is on fire. It's understatement to say Africa is on fire. Africa has always been on fire. Uh, the fire has always been there. If Africa was a mountain, there has always been fire on the mountain. And uh, our people has always been on the receiving end. They've been mm. running, running from the lava, coming out from the volcano, for volcanic eruption from the mountain called Africa. 
but at this time, Congress in Burkina Faso, in Mali, Niger, and some forthcoming other African entities have summoned courage, has taken it upon themselves, <laughs> has donned the apparel of courage to become the firefighters by themselves. Because if we don't summon the courage to fight out the fire, the fire will gain ground and then there will be no place for us to sit or to have a place to call home. That is why it's been so. And I want to thank my brothers and sisters in this courageous African entities, not countries, because Africa never had a country. Africa was one. Before the vultures came in from the way they call them West. But come to think about that, they're talking about democracy. They don't know nothing mm. about democracy. You think democracy is all about when people file or queue in a line and go to cast a vote that never was or never will, uh, will ever be counted. You call that democracy? That ain't no democracy. By definition, democracy is government. Oh, listen now. Government of the people by the people and for the people. So it all depends on how you observe your own democracy. The government presently in Niger, in Mali, in Burkina Faso is real democracy because it is of the people. The people rule. They took it upon themselves. The people have right to pick up the mantle and decide their own destiny. It is a right for people to decide their own destiny. That is what the people in these African entities has done. Just like Tomo Sankara, who was killed mm -hmm. by the West. Just like Patrice Lumumba, who was killed by the West. Just like Samora Machel, who was killed by the West. I can go on and on. Jono Savimbi, they never let him, give him, they never gave him a breathing space. Am I coming out clear? Chief, am I on air? Yes. All right, mm -hmm. like that's what I'm saying. That fire needs to be put out. Look, there was, there was Russian revolution. When things went awry, when the cabals were not for the people, the people took it upon themselves that they're going to have to liberate themselves from the hands of these treacherous leaders, the feudalists. It happened. There was French Revolution. There was German Revolution. You all remember the Industrial Revolution in Europe. There was Arab Spring. So when it happens with us, for us, then these, uh, what do you call them, um, studies of the West, proxies of the West, you call ECOWAS. ECOWAS is a Ponzi scheme. It's set up there. Who runs ECOWAS? It's Nigeria, it's Abuja. I'd like to thank you for calling me. It's been a massive number that I'm doing, but I know you're there. You're sitting there watching me say, ah, I'm going to ah, chief. We keep hearing the same thing over. Well, then you call. 
Let me hear from you. Let me hear what you have to say. Call it. Because if we don't talk about it, it goes away. I remember hearing a pastor who was very angry. She, and I said she, was very angry that it seemed like in Nigeria, uh, there is no more talk about the election. It's being swept. And she said she was not going to do And should you stop talking about what is going on in Africa, if you allow it to be swept and not talked about, then you're doing this service to us as well as the colonialism. So we need to hear you. We need to hear your voice. We need to hear what you have to say. We need to get your mind into what we do. If you don't think it's important, and you should, call it. I just want to hear. Next time. Next week. Next time. Call it. At one o'clock. I welcome you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God keep you. God guide you. And God keep you safe. You and your family. Until next week. God bless you. Thank you very much.